guys. So as you know, music plays a huge part in our lives today, but it also played a huge part in culture during the Civil War. Music during the Civil War not only affected things on the battlefield, but it also influenced later artists such as Elvis Presley. First off, I want to talk to you guys about how Civil War music affected life in the battlefield and affected the outcomes of the war itself. One purpose of Civil War music was the drummer boys. They were able to keep the soldiers in line while they were marching, so instead of just being a bunch of idiots on the field not knowing where to go, the, the drummer boys were served as a purpose to lead them in the direction they wanted to go and tell them when to start and stop and just to keep them in rhythm in general. So morale. Morale is a key to success during the war. Because if your soldiers aren't happy, if they're not willing to fight for your country, if they're not loyal to our country, then they're not going to want to fight and they're not going to do as well in battle. For the Union, the main song that kind of hyped everyone up and increased everyone's morale was their anthem, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which you could hear right now. It's a tune most of the people should recognize. So not only did Civil War music serve as the purpose of keeping their soldiers in rhythm, but it also served as a purpose to increase the morale of the soldiers and keep them happy while they were fighting. So instead of you know, being homesick, being you know, worried about whether they're going to die in battle, they would, their morales and their spirits would be lifted by the music and they'd want to keep fighting instead of giving up and quitting the army. So as you know, a war can't be fought without weaponry. So here's our segment on weaponry from Paul. Thanks, Jay Hosh. Now I'm here to teach you guys about some Civil War <laughs> weaponry. Alright, so the first gun we're going to be talking about is the Springfield Rifle. Now at the time of the Civil War, when it first started, guns only fired one shot. This was a musket. You load it in, you put your powder in, you put your ball in, you put the cap on, cock it, fire. It, the whole process takes about like 15 to 20 seconds to load the gun. If you're really good, you can maybe fire three shots per minute. Now the Springfield musket was the most used gun during the Civil War. But about halfway through the Civil War, people started making all sorts of inventions that could make guns fire more than one shot. And that played a big factor during the Civil War. The first gun that came into play that could fire more than one shot was the Henry rifle. Now this could hold 16 rounds. 15 in the mag and one in the chamber. Now that's already a great improvement over the one to three shots fired from the Springfield rifle. And the Henry rifle could fire as fast as you could hit the lever down and shoot. But with the Springfield rifle, every time you wanted to fire, you kind of had to make your own bullet. You put in your powder, you put in the metal part that the projectile, the mini ball, and then you put on a cap to ignite the powder to shoot the ball. But with the Henry rifle, what they did is they put that all into one little bullet like this, which is what we see nowadays. Because you wouldn't be able to make your own bullet for each time you fire if you wanted to have a repeating rifle. So what they did is they made cartridges. And the, the Henry rifle could hold 16 cartridges, which made it able to fire in rapid succession, unlike the Springfield. The Henry rifle was so good on ammo capacity that the Union soldiers gave it the nickname, the gun you load on Sunday and you shoot all week. Because once you, you fill up that bad boy, you're just shooting and shooting and shooting. Unlike the... As you can see, that's a lot slower than just... So the Henry rifle was very effective, as you can see. But the problem with the Henry rifle, it was, it was $40 a gun. The Union Army wanted to have this in the hands of every one of their soldiers. But a man named Christopher Spencer saw this problem with the Henry rifle, and he decided to make his own repeating rifle that he called, hence the Spencer, you know? So the Spencer rifle wasn't as good as the Henry rifle, but it was a lot cheaper to make, and he could ma mass produce it very easily, which was the problem with the Henry rifle. The Spencer was a very good repeating rifle, but it wasn't as good as the Henry. A, because the Spencer could only hold 7 rounds, where the Henry could hold 16. That's where he got him first. But the Spencer was able to be mass produced due to its simple design. Although the Spencer rifle wasn't as effective as the Henry rifle, it was still greatly loved by the Union soldiers. So that's it for weaponry used during the Civil War. But the soldiers couldn't really use that weaponry if they didn't know where or how to stand and, and where to go, you know? So that's more, that's more under the battle tactics category. Yeah, here's Drew with the battle tactics. Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm going to talk to you guys about battle tactics. At the beginning of the Civil War, most of the tactics used in battle originated from the Mexican-American War. Over time, however, soldiers and generals started using their own battle tactics that were effective in basically anything that could defeat the enemy. One of the key differences between the Civil War and the Mexican-American War was that this, in the Civil War, the soldiers didn't have to stand so close to each other when exchanging fire. 
Instead, they could stand far away from each other, hundreds of yards, due to the midi ball, which was a new type of bullet that could shoot far range. In terms of attack, however, the Union soldiers specifically used a popular tactic called fire by file. The way this tactic works is that you have two lines of men, one in front and one in the back. With having two lines, there are pairs. There's one person in front and one in back, and that is a pair. Now, what the general had the soldiers do was the soldiers in their pair would shoot together, but only those two soldiers. And this would happen down the line of soldiers. So they would start with the first pair, then the second pair, then the third pair. After using a fire-by-file technique, Union generals often use flanking to attack the enemy. Flanking occurs with the use of three groups of soldiers, one on the right, one on the left, and one in the center. The group in the center marches straight towards the enemy, attacking them straight on, while the left and the right groups of soldiers will attack the enemy from the sides. If you're surrounded by the enemy, there's a question of where to shoot. And if you want to shoot a particular group of men, then you have to face all your soldiers towards that group. In which case, if there's a man in front of me and I want to shoot to this group of soldiers, I have to avoid shooting the man in front of me because obviously I don't want to kill my own troop. And that's bad. Other than flanking, Union generals often ordered a Zouave rush, which is basically a type of charge towards the enemy in which you would not go straight on towards the enemy, but you'd almost go in like a zigzag pattern so that you would avoid the bullets coming at you and make a difficult target for the Confederates to hit the Union soldiers, but you could also fire at the Confederate soldiers, taking out their whole army. So those were three really useful tactics used by the Union against the Confederacy. Hey, so as you just saw, those were three very important things during the Civil War. We had some music, right? some weaponry, and some battle tactics. So what you haven't seen is those three things used together. So what we made is a little reenactment of how a battle would look like incorporating these three things. So let's roll the clip. <laughs> 